Hey art friends, today we are working on this awesome winter cardinal DIY kit. So once you purchase your kit from Curio, open it up, get yourself some water and a paper towel, and I'll guide you through how to paint this awesome bird. So whenever we start with our project, the first thing we're going to start with is some of our lighter areas first, or the background. It's always kind of a toss up between which way you start first. But for this project, I'm going to start with my lighter colors, which is the first part, the eye. I'm going to get my white and I'm going to take my brush that's included in my kit, or you could always purchase more at Curio. We have different sizes available for you. And to have better control over my brush, I'm going to hold it up in this shiny part up here because if I hold it way back here it's super uncontrollable but if I slide it up here now I have more control over it the first thing I'm going to do is actually paint inside my eye white even though my canvas is white you want to make sure that the paint dries nice and shiny and that you have white paint on top of that mine looks a little different than yours because I use paper because I like to save all the canvases for you this is the only spot at the moment that's white, so when we're done, you're gonna wash out your brush. Make sure you push it to the bottom of your water container, and more importantly, make sure you dry it so that we don't have watery paint kind of oozing everywhere. The next thing we're gonna work on is our beak. I always like to turn my pictures so that I'm working really close to the part of my project that I'm on, and I also like to outline my areas first. So I'm going to Go beside my line and then once I outline it I'm going to paint in the inside when you're trying to get a little tight space like this painted in use the tip of your brush and start at that really tough spot and then pull your brush away and do that from both sides to help you keep some of those little points nice and pointy and we'll use that a lot for when we do some other parts of our cardinal to help it continue looking like the cardinal. I'm trying to smooth out any big globs that I have, keep that nice and smooth. And now I'm going to work on my cardinal. So when I do my cardinal, I'm going to continue holding my paintbrush up in that metallic part. And I'm going to once again outline. So I'm going to make sure that I'm starting up at the hair, not really hair, but the feathers that kind of look like the top, like the hair. And I'm going to put my brown paintbrush right up into that point and pull my paintbrush down. I'm gonna do that on both sides to help keep that point whenever I'm working. If you're using a square brush, this is round brush, square brush, you can do the same thing with the square brush too. You can make sure that you put that brush right up against the corner and pull that down towards you. It just has a little bit of a different thickness to it. Sometimes people forget that you can use a square brush also and you can hold it this way. It doesn't have to always be painted with a big thick line. You could also take this square brush and you could hold it this way and you can have a very thin line like this so you still even though this brush is bigger, you can still get up into those little pointed areas depending on how you hold your brush. And it's totally up to you. Some people like a round brush, some people like a square brush. Whatever brush you feel more comfortable using, you're more than welcome to. I'm going to switch over to this one because I like how thick the line is whenever I'm outlining. I'm going to turn my paper. You can be turning your canvas at any point too to help make sure that you're able to paint right in front of you. And if this part is extremely difficult for you, you can always ask a grown-up to be able to help you outline this spot or someone that's older than you and you can paint in the rest. Now that we're starting to paint our bird, this bird comes off the edge of our canvas. So as you're painting, you wanna make sure that you paint the sides of your canvas, the bottom and the top also, because when you hang it up, it'll look awesome because it's all nicely finished up and finished painting. And we don't have to outline this part because it's gonna be all red anyway. So once we're done outlining, 
We can fill in the rest of our feathers with this red paint. Trying to make sure that you don't have big globs, but you also don't want to be painting and your paintbrush is really dry and you have these scratchy lines to it. That tells you that you need more paint. This big glob tells you that there's too much. So you're trying to find the balance in between both of those, kind of smoothing out areas where there's big globs and making sure you have enough that it's nicely coating your canvas and you can't see that white canvas anymore underneath. Every color has a different look to it. Sometimes colors cover really nice. Sometimes colors can look a little bit streaky, so it's okay to let your canvas dry and come back to it later and do a second layer on it so that it looks even darker or even more filled in, not as streaky, not uneven. All right, using that square brush kind of made me do that space a little bit faster. If at any point I'm going too fast for you, you can always pause it until you catch up or you can pause it and wait for another day. You don't have to do your painting all at once. Now that I'm done with my cardinal, we're gonna cruise right into doing our background. I'm gonna wash out both of my brushes and dry them. Oh, this shows me that I didn't wash my brush out good enough. There was still some red paint on there, so I'm gonna wash it again and dry it. Oh, that's a little bit better. Jeez, that red paint really wanted to stay in there. I'm going to do my sky next. So all of these areas in between my tree is gonna be a really nice dark blue color. And there's a couple different options that we can talk about with our project. I'm going to still use that square brush just because it lets me cover in a really nice amount of time. But I chose dark blue for this kit color because I feel like it just helps to make it look a little bit more wintry. Kind of has that feel to it that it's not bright light blue like a summertime sky. It gave it a little bit more of a winter sky feel to it. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I've been doing the entire time so far. I'm gonna use my brush to outline first, and then I'm gonna paint in whenever I'm done with that. We try to make our kits so that they're friendly for all age levels. So you can absolutely continue to outline and paint the entire background in this dark blue or you could also start to do something that's a little bit different by kind of adding some depth to the background or making it look like maybe there's some snow or even like a blustery feel to your background. So one thing you can do, if you want to, you don't have to, but once you're done outlining, when your blue paint is still wet, we'll do it in little areas at a time. When this is still wet, you can take your paintbrush and you can add in some white with kind of an X shape to it. So you're gonna kind of take your brush and kind of go back and forth in an X shape, except for when you get a little closer to those edges. And when you do that, just adds a little bit of depth to it to make it look a little bit more interesting. And you can kind of paint in between blue and white without washing your paintbrush if you want to give the background this kind of modeled kind of depth look to it and it's not something you have to do you know we're not the same person there's things that I like and there's definitely things that you like so if you don't want to do this even though you're capable of it because you don't like the way that that looks that's absolutely okay but I just want to give you some options for some people that are maybe looking to do something slightly different so you can always feel free to add in some white to a background to help make it look like there's a little bit of an atmosphere to it. Or if you want to make it look really, really dark like nighttime, you could even add the tiniest bit of black. But we don't wanna to add too much black because we want it to be able to be this really nice scene where we can see the cardinal and we wouldn't be able to see it if it was nighttime out. So if you want to, you can absolutely continue adding that white and kind of making it look like it has a marbled look. 
or you could just continue painting your background in just straight up regular dark blue and not doing the kind of mottled white look to it. I like that look to it, which is funny because I do it a lot on a ton of different paintings. So clearly it is something that I definitely like. Um, I do like to paint with more of like a choppy look to it. So when you're doing this, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. It can have a choppiness to it, which is neat. It can be very painterly, which is what that's called. So I'm still outlining first. And remember, you can switch between like, if you wanna outline with a round, smaller brush, you can. Or you can outline with this bigger brush. Sometimes people get nervous with a bigger brush and that's okay. If you have control over it, you can still absolutely use big brushes. We wanna be careful with that beak. We don't wanna accidentally wipe it out. We want our bird to be able to sing and communicate with all the other birds. So extra careful as we go along the edge of that beak. And I normally in a painting always do the background first. So this is a little different for me that I'm doing it second, but in this video, I chose to kind of go from our lighter to darker colors so that our water doesn't get really murky and kind of working from kind of our easier parts to our little bit more tricky ones to kind of warm up. And you can feel free, like I like that big white area there. So you can feel free to leave that. Or if you don't, you can smooth it out a little bit. The more you go back over top of your white, the more it's gonna blend into the blue, kind of making a lighter blue, which is fine. It's your project. It's one thing we love about our art classes is that everybody's piece, even though we're doing something really similar and the same, they can all look different because you add your own creativity into it, which is fantastic. Maybe I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but you don't want your, I shouldn't say you don't want, one thing to think about is maybe you don't want your sky super, super light because you might wanna add some snowflakes in with white as we get more towards the end of our painting. Oh, I have a lot of white up here. Almost looks like he has a wig on. If you get too light, you can always bounce back into that darker blue and put that back on top to kind of tone down the light that you did to it. It's kind of like a, a balancing game. Figure out what you like best. It can be a little tricky sometimes painting in between these tree branches. Sometimes it's easy to forget that a tree branch is there and you accidentally take it out. So try to be careful as you're painting to make sure you're in the right spot and not painting a tree branch blue. Your brown should probably cover it, but if we can avoid that, that would be good. Okay, adding in that little bit of white, because I like to do that. You'll notice it a lot with our different kits. I don't know, it's just fun. There's something fun about it to me. It's very relaxing. Hopefully you're finding it relaxing and not stressful to look perfect. Some people like to use the word perfect because they think that their artwork can only look nice if it's perfect, and that is so not true. All right, cruising right along. We're gonna go ahead and work on our tree. And this is where you can feel free. You could use the palette for mixing for your blues if you wanted to. You can also use your palette for mixing when you're doing your tree. What you might wanna do is you might want to take this brown and put a little bit of it on your palette. Okay, or like a medium amount. And if you add a little bit of black to it, just a little bit, because black is very dark and it likes to take over by making a another color very dark but you can make yourself some different shades of brown i could actually add 
going to take this and I'm going to put it over here. I can actually add even more black to this and make that brown even darker still if I wanted to. So I could have a brown that's the brown that came with your kit, kind of like a medium brown. This is even a little bit darker. And then this one that I just made is darker still. So as you're working on your painting today, you can paint your entire tree in just the straight brown that came with your paint tray or paint kit, or you can actually paint your DIY kit by doing kind of these long strips. And we wanna keep them going vertically up and down because it helps to make it look more like tree bark. It's gonna add a texture to it. So on your tree trunk, you wanna go up and down, just like your tree trunk grows. And on the branches, you wanna go the directions that your branches are growing. So you would actually go kind of diagonal like this. And I know it looks a little silly at the moment, but as we keep doing that and filling it in, it's gonna look really awesome. It's gonna look like a very realistic tree. And this is kind of painterly too, but it still is gonna look really realistic when it's done. And you can use any of the shades of brown first. Because I mixed this dark brown, I didn't wanna wash it off of my brush, so I used that first. Now I'm gonna wash my brush out just to get some of that darker color off. I'm gonna dry it. And I'm actually gonna take, I'm gonna take this very light brown and I'm just gonna put it kind of beside and in between some of those areas where the darker brown is. I'm not gonna fill all of it in because I still have this medium brown. So I'm gonna leave some spots for where the medium brown can go. I happen to be using my round brush for this because I like how when it's putting the paint on, kind of has this like area that's a little thinner and then it gets a little wider because of how hard I'm pushing on my brush. I'm gonna continue that into the tree branches too. Remembering that I still have one more color and you can make as many colors as you want to. I just chose to stick with, I chose, yes, I chose to stick with three, but if you wanted to mix like four or five different shades, you could absolutely do that if you want to. Or like I said, you don't have to mix it all. You could just paint it in straight brown and that's fine. And now I'm gonna fill this in with my very last one. Kind of this medium shade of brown. And I'm gonna put this medium in between where all of those different white spots are. One thing that can be a little tricky about color mixing is that you wanna make sure that you mix enough. So you have quite a bit of paint inside those cups. Don't be afraid to mix some shades together and use it. But you can see that this is really starting to look like real tree bark. Instead of it just being one color brown, which still looks great, especially if you're a younger artist just starting out, your picture is gonna look so amazing. But if you're looking for something with a little bit more of a challenge, then that would be a way that you could absolutely do it is by adding those different shades of brown, these different kind of values to it. And you could even do something like this when you're coloring. If you're coloring in a tree with crayon, you don't have to use just one brown crayon. You could use the many different shades of brown that come in that pack of crayons or colored pencils or markers. So it's something you can use a lot. Nice. The last part's probably the trickiest. It's not something that you do all the time with outlining so it can make people a little bit nervous. Before we outline, we're gonna do one more step and then we'll continue kind of using the black to outline. So we are gonna use black for inside the eye area. 
And I'm going to remember how I first started doing my triangles by putting the tip of my round brush inside and then pulling that down. And this is where it kind of gets a little tricky because we're using the darkest color. It's the last step. We wanna be careful not to smear it or get it on our hands and bump it into places it's not supposed to be. One really great thing to do would be to let your project dry completely before doing these next couple steps. I'm gonna continue doing it so that you can see what it will look like finished, but obviously you can pause it anytime and turn it off and turn it back on for when you're ready. If you want to speed up the process, you can always ask a family member if you're able to use a hair dryer to help so that if you do want to get it done all at once because you're excited about it, you're not having to work on top of wet paint, it can be dry. So this is what our Cardinal's eye looks like. I like to do a little kind of C shape, kind of something like this. And then I paint that in so that it looks like the Cardinal has a sense of direction, like it's looking. So now is kind of the tricky part. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. The two things that you absolutely still need to outline is the little dividing area between the beak so that we can see that where it would open. And then we do want to outline the wing so that you can see that. If you're very nervous about this, you could always let it dry completely and you can use a Sharpie to draw over top of these lines. I had some black, or was it brown? I think I picked up some brown from my finger and got some of that on there. That's why you wait until it's dry. That's okay. So it can be finished if you want it to be, or you can continue outlining it. When you outline, you want it all to be really dry. You wanna to try to start kind of in the middle, even though that sounds silly, because you want this area to be done so you can grow from the middle out. You don't wanna start down here and then you're trying to do the middle while this is wet down here. So I am gonna start kind of in the middle, which would actually be, let me see, there's two different spots. I could start with the outside of my beak and kind of down my cardinal. It's always easier to outline when your brush is pulling down towards you. If you try to push your brush away from you, it makes a really thick line. So I'm gonna turn this, I'm gonna do the top of the beak, and I'm gonna do these really fun feathers at the top, and I'm still gonna do the same thing I always have, starting inside and going out so that the round part of my brush can help make that tip of the feathers really nice. I'm a big paper or canvas turner. I always turn my stuff so that I work really close to it. I'm also going to outline the tree against the background. I think that looks really nice. I think it helps to kind of make it pop against the background and you do not have to outline. I love how things look outlined. But that's me, and we know that you and I are not the same person, so you do you. When I'm drawing, I like to outline things in Sharpie. When I'm painting, I like to outline things in black. And then once we're done outlining, I actually said that you could be done before, but I guess I still do have a few different options for you. So hopefully people didn't turn off the video because then they're missing out on some cool ideas. So we have all these dark colors in our tree to look like all the different textures. You could also add in some different lines with your paintbrush to make an additional look of texture. You don't have black added in there and you could absolutely add some black lines in if you want to help that texture appear even more, but you don't have to. Another thing you could do also is you could use your white 
to add snowflakes into the background if you want to. And you can do that a couple of different ways. So there's a lot of different ideas for you. You'll definitely want to make sure that your painting is totally dry before you add snowflakes. But depending on your skill level, you could be like super fancy and you could paint these amazing like kind of a letter X and then you add maybe a middle part to it and you could paint some like that. You could even, depending on your ability, you could kind of make it look like it has these little points to it. You could get like crazy fancy if you want to. And you could actually, for those of you that maybe even have like a silver Sharpie at home, you could probably draw these on with a silver Sharpie or something different. So I could draw different snowflakes around. I could also use the back of my paintbrush, dip that in the white, and I can add these really nice little polka dots around to be able to look like little snowflakes without making it so hard like that. That was a little tricky. And you can also still add snowflakes, but they don't have to be that detailed. You could add, I always start with kind of that X shape and then I add an additional one, but you could combine those two ideas. You could do polka dots on the end of your snowflakes. Some families are very afraid of it, but if you have glitter at home, you could even put some glitter on here. When we do this art project in the studio, we use glitter to be able to make it look really nice and shiny, like the snow has fallen and collected on the trees. So there are so many different options of how you can work on this project and how you can finish it up. The main thing I want to make sure of is that you had fun and that whenever you're done, you take a picture of it and you tag us on social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, at Curio Cool. Make sure you tag us so we can see your finished piece. If you love this DIY kit, we have so many more options where that came from. So please be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can see all the really cool videos and be part of all the different awesome art making we have happening.